Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. We are talking today about what does it really mean to follow Jesus? What does it really mean to be a follower of Jesus and to have the basic building blocks of our life uh, set up so that we can follow him? And in our church services recently, we've been talking about uh, living like Jesus is Lord for one and also living like he's an uncontainable God and, and he can't be contained within our, even our understanding of how things work. And a lot of the times we hold him back and we restrict him from, from living fully in our lives. And in, in thinking about that, I, I've wondered, what does it really mean for us to live like Jesus is Lord? And one thought that came to mind is, if Jesus is Lord, then he's the Lord of my house, you know, my spiritual house, my being. He's Lord of my life. But, but he's Lord of the manor, so to speak. And I wonder if we think of our lives like as if our lives were a house, if we, if we come in and we treat him casually and carelessly. I don't know if you've ever visited one of your friend's homes, but do you go into their home and just, you know, open the front door and enter without announcing yourself and ringing the doorbell? Do you go in and sit down on the furniture and put your feet up on the, fur on the furniture or the coffee table? Do you take your shoes off and scatter them across the living room? You know, do you, do you ch bring a change of clothes and change in their house and then just leave your clothes laying all over the place and make a mess of their kitchen, you know, and so on and so forth? And I wonder if sometimes we treat J Jesus casually like that. I wonder if Maybe, maybe there's a better way for us to handle our relationship with God. And one of the things you see in the Bible before Jesus came, when Jesus was, or well, when God was dealing with his people, one of the things he gave uh, his people was what he called the tent of meeting. He gave them a place where they could come and specifically meet with God. And he was, he was super detailed about how he the design that he gave them for that tent. He, he gave them specific details. In fact, he even told them specific people to use among the children of Israel that, that, that he was going to give special gifts for, for making the fabric and doing all, all of the, the work with the metals and, and everything that they did. He, God gave special gifts to craftsmen in order to make these, these real detailed uh, instructions that he gave them for, for building this tent of meeting. And now you might be thinking, well, what's a tent of meeting? I don't know if you've ever gone camping and, and put together a tent. You know, sometimes tents can be hard to put up. You know, in modern times, they make some pretty easy to set up tents, but there's still some pretty difficult ones. Well, this tent in the Old Testament before Jesus came was, I mean, it was very elaborate. And the children of Israel would take it with them everywhere that they would go and they would set it up. And it was the place that they would come to meet with God. Uh, but the thing was, you had to go there to meet with God. And in fact, God also had a, a bunch of people that he called priests. And they were from a, a specific tribe of the Israelites called the Levites. And these priests had, had real detailed instructions about how they were expected to present people to God. And if they, would, they would have to ceremonially cleanse them before people could approach God. And it was, it was very specific and very detailed. Now Jesus came, and one of the things that Jesus did that was so significant was he gave you and I access to the very presence of God. In fact, he turned things around to the point where, where in the Old Testament, before Jesus came, people had to go to this tent of meeting to meet with God. Jesus changed things so that you and I, in a sense, are that tent of meeting. Because the Bible says that we're now temples of the Holy Spirit. And we're fitted together as a community to be a temple of God. So you and I, we're a place where we can meet with God. And I wonder if we treat our pursuit of God and our relationship with God too casually. I want to read a scripture to you from 1 Peter. and th This is what it says in 1 Peter. Peter is speaking to, to the people and he tells them, he says, prepare your hearts and minds for action. Stay alert and fix your hope firmly on the marvelous grace that's coming to you. For when Jesus Christ is unveiled, a greater measure of grace is going to be released to you. 
As obedient children, never again shape your lives by the desires that you followed when you didn't know better. You know, you and I, we have a way that we lived before we understood our relationship with Jesus. But now that we know him, he wants us to prepare our hearts and our minds for action and to be alert and fix our minds on the hope that he has for us. As, a, as God's obedient children, never again shape your lives by the desires that you followed. I mean, that's a strong statement. Never again. Instead, shape your lives to become like the Holy One who called you. For Scripture says, you are to be holy because I am holy. And then later on in verse 22, this is 1 Peter chapter 1, he says, Now because of your obedience to the truth, you have purified your very souls. And this empowers you to be full of love for your fellow believers. So express this sincere love toward one another passionately and with a pure heart. You know, and, and I wonder sometimes if we're a little too casual in our relationship with God. We treat him like we're going into a friend's house and we throw our things around and we don't treat it carefully. When God has called you and me to treat him as Lord, is Jesus Lord of your life? What does it really mean? What if we were able to live our lives where we're, we're alert and prepared for action, what if we were able to treat our, our lives carefully to make sure we're always prepared to present ourselves to God, but also to treat one another around us with love and be prepared to reach the world around us? Because, folks, what else are we called for? We're called to, to live in such a way that as temples of God, we're able to present God to the world. Why do I have a tent back here? Because I want to remind you that in the Old Testament, there was this tent of meeting where people had to go there so they could have an encounter and an experience with God. But now you and I, we are tents of meeting. What does that mean? Man, that means to me that everywhere that I go, I am somebody that God can use to, to cause somebody to meet with God because I'm that tent of meeting for people now. So I should take care of myself carefully. I should be diligent about doing the things that I need to do to make sure that he's Lord of every area of my life. I'm preparing myself. I'm taking care of my mind, making sure my mind is focused on the hope that God has for me. My mind and my heart, they're focused on doing the things that Jesus has asked me to do. So I'd ask you today, what are some things that you can do today to let Jesus be Lord of your life? What are some things that you can do today so that people around you can, can know how Jesus has changed your life? What are some things that you can do today just to let the presence of God be, be big in your life? I wonder if you could have lunch with somebody and, and, and just talk to them and be their friend. I wonder if there's somebody that you can be a blessing to. I feel like as children of God, we should be accused of being gracious and, and being generous. I feel like we should be accused of being a blessing to the world around us. I wonder if anybody would look at you and say, that person is always a blessing to people that he meets. Or that person is always generous to people that she meets. I wonder if that would be something that we're accused of. I want that to be something that I'm accused of. That I always err on the side of generosity because Jesus came to be a blessing to you. Jesus came to transform your hearts and your mind and to bring eternal life and salvation to you. And I, I, I have a feeling that his destiny for the children of God is for us to be a blessing to the world today. So if Jesus is Lord of your life, what if he called you to be a blessing to the world around you? That's just some food for thought today. And I, I'd like you to ponder that and ask the Holy Spirit... Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me about this? What are you speaking to me about how I can be a blessing? And then I want you to ask yourself a second question. What are you going to do about it? Thank you for joining me, and I'll look forward to connecting with you again.